Hey, welcome to this session on entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, There's two parts of the same coin, uh, and I'm going to tell you something about it. My name is Jan Fick. I'm a professor at the Stavanger Bis uh, University Business School, and I'm going to talk a bit about what is going on. Innovation, creating something new that can be a lot of different things. On the slide here you see nine different types of innovation processes. And it's important to figure out what kind of process are the ones that you are doing. How does it fit? There is also a matter of who is the stakeholders coming in and how does the stakeholders inflict on what's going on. Of course, it's easy to think about it in a business model. Perhaps not that easy to think about it in an incremental uh, model or more process-oriented innovation. But innovation goes on all around us. And the stakeholders are uh, not only the company, existing company. It can be a mixture of uh, capital, governmental issues, and so on. In Norway, we see a lot of regional dis uh, distribution on where does innovation actually take place. This figure shows where we have startup companies uh, in Norway uh, and for the last uh, 15 years. But when it comes to uh, innovation and employment, we see that very few of these companies actually grow in size. They start up and they remain small. These uh, red dots tell you what we, where do we find companies with more than 250 employees today. So innovation and entrepreneurship closely related, but one is about getting new ideas from start to the market. Another one is to build a company around those new ideas. And there's a lot of trends and, and a lot of experience in how to do this. Some of these new trends is being taught by Bill Ortlet at MIT. And uh, there is uh, what's called MIT REAP, a new product uh, show, and a way of thinking, showing that uh, how can we understand more of the process getting new ideas through the pipeline. It might be existing company, it might be a new company, but we want to get it out. And especially when we think about the new company, we have small medium sizes with a short timeline, and we have more innovation driven entrepreneurship, where that needs often a lot of investment, uh, have a, in a long timeline, but it can have a much bigger growth process. Bill Outlet talks about 24 steps, and the ideas for those 24 steps comes from a lot of the existing literature about innovation and entrepreneurship. It's a model with a long continuous line, uh, as shown here. And as he says, the first steps is who is the customer? Who do we actually develop something for? It can be to identify the market segment, it can be to build up an end user profile. And <coughs> next step is then to figure out what we can do for these customers. How, what is our core ID? What is competitive position? And uh, of course, how does the customer acquire our product? If we make something, develop something, how can we be sure that there is a sales process? <laughs> and how we make money from this, the, um, disseminating the product to our customers. Important part, and then how we design product to meet that market, to meet the customer. What are the assumptions that the product and, and uh, the customer would like? And then, as a last part, how do we scale our new business or scale the product uh, production in an existing companies. 
all of these is 24 steps that has shown uh, its value in teaching both innovation and especially entrepreneurship. It is an approach that is comprehensive but practical. It's proven to, uh, to stand the test of time and it creates a common language to knowledge to fair. We have to remember that more and more companies try to have a very sh uh, short time from ID to market. So speed is important uh, and knowledge needed for that speed. And with the technology digital revolution that is coming on, we need to figure out how to do this. Bill Oltet has written about this in a book called Disciplined Entrepreneurship. And it's a toolbox that can be uh, avoided. What we see is that to be successful into this, we need both a lot of skills on how to do this, but we also need a group of people with some kind of spirit that will actually build the culture to provide innovation and entrepreneurship.